Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, this time I wanted to talk about the real Dropbox design. Uh, many of us have seen this block diagram in rocking system design. And what this diagram basically explains is how Dropbox is designed uh, to upload files, manage your metadata, and actually get updates if there's a, a modification in the file or if there is any internal processing that has been done on your file. So basically the block diagram I just want to have to explain is pretty self-explanatory but I can give you a small uh, information about what this context diagram is. Uh, the clients uh, are uploading files using the block service. The block server or the service here is actually taking care of your uploads and downloads. Uh, the metadata server actually manages the metadata of that of that file so it's the file name description where it's been saved and other attributes like the permissions who has access to the file etc and the synchronization server over here which is basically managing the updates if there is an update to the file if there are some changes all the different uh, information that needs to be notified to the client is being managed by the synchronization server so I don't want to go in detail about what this design is because if you read the book, you pretty much know what he, what the author is trying to say. But I wanted to go in detail about the magic pocket, which uh, the Dropbox has actually built. So I wanted to show you what the real solution is uh, uh, that is out there and which has already been published uh, in their blogs. So this is magic pocket. And this is actually on the Dropbox uh, blog, so you can actually go take a read, uh, go take a look at it. Uh, so they have uh, defined an architecture. So this is sorry, I just want to get into the architecture of Dropbox. Okay. So this is something that they've already defined uh, in uh, Dropbox. So. What this basically it means is the file has been uploaded through the front end and the file has been uh, broken up into blocks and then those are saved into the uh, cells. So this is a very, very high level diagram of Dropbox. So if you look at it, they actually show you a multi-zone architecture. So obviously we have a multi-zone architecture to prevent uh, from failures, high availability, and also some amount of disaster recovery. So this is their uh, high availability architecture. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can actually read through it. Uh, they actually talk about multi-zone architecture with at least two zones where it's been replicated and the, uh, and the redundancy, the third one might be avoiding uh, natural disasters. So now going back into the, the data model, which is very important. So every file is broken up into blocks as mentioned here. The blocks are four megs in size. So here there are three blocks because uh, it's not perfect 12 megs. So it's four megs, four megs and 100, 100 kilobytes. And each block is compressed and encrypted as mentioned over here. And they use the word MP for magic pocket because they don't want to keep calling it as magic pocket, magic pocket. And, um, and these blocks, what they mentioned here is, is grouped into buckets so that it's easier to store, uh, store the data. So 4 megs is a pretty much very small size to actually manage. So they put them into random uh, buckets. The buckets don't have anything in common. Uh, if you put uh, a, like uh, the blocks in a bucket have nothing in common. They just a uh, logical entry to put the blocks in it. And these buckets have been uh, uh, replicated in, in, in volume. So that's what this diagram actually talks about. So to identify a block, they have a way to identify a block uh, which has a hash and the hash will tell you where the block is and it's actually maintained in the block index. So I will go through that uh, in a second. Yeah, so the hash is where, in which cell is this bucket, uh, is, is this, um, a bucket in the and the bucket and the checksum the checksum is actually to maintain uh, the uh, uh, the the tolerance of that partition so that if we know that the uh, the the block didn't get corrupted so i'll go in detail about what a block uh, what is this immutable block store is so whenever a chunk is is actually changed in in uh, dropbox uh, architecture you they don't actually uh, mutate blocks they actually create new blocks so if there is any uh, any block that has been modified or something like that they create a new block they don't go and edit an existing block so that's what this uh, this immutable block store uh, storage system is actually talking about 
and the next one is they actually maintain a file journal so if they, if a certain block has been modified they actually keep the journal of it so that they know that uh, this file version 1 is a b c and this file version 2 is a f c so they know all the different changes that have happened to a particular uh, version and this is pretty much about the workload uh, of that is uh, involved and how they actually do the spinning of the uh, writing these blocks into the hard disks and all that i'll go in 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 detail where they uh, uh, why they they can get away from not using ssds and and i don't know if uh, many of you are aware ssds are very very expensive yeah and amazon we just keep using ebs volumes with ssds and all that stuff but actually they are expensive so if, uh, so for a certain enterprise to actually own so many ssds and managing it is is a lot of a costly affair so how they got away from not using so many ssds and using regular volumes i'm going to talk about it uh, so the next thing i wanted to go through is uh, the architecture which is this one so this is actually the front end determines where which cell it goes into so this is a, a a cell and a cell is like a storage unit so you can actually go into details about what the cell is and um, so this is how a cell looks like a cell has a master the master has not a lot of like the master is like pretty much a janitor in this system i'll i'll explain in detail what the master does but let's look at the volume managers what the volume managers does is uh, they actually manage these object storage devices and each object storage device is actually writing to the disk so you need to know how you're going to write to the disk and the replication table remembers which volume is in which storage device and uh, how you're actually replicating it so I think uh, they've actually, yeah, which bucket is in which volume. So the blocks go into a logical bucket, the bucket goes into a volume. So this explains uh, where exactly uh, uh, it's going and the volume is mapped to the, uh, to the object storage device and open is if the volume is open for write. They don't open all the volumes for write at the same time. They open it at, uh, they actually have very few volumes which are open. And when you want to write, they, you actually pick an open volume and you write to it. And type is basically to know the encoding on it. So they use eraser, eraser codes. Eraser codes are a mechanism for data protection. Uh, so if they want to know what type of encoding is there in that uh, volume. So that's the type. And the generation is their own consistency model, which uh, consistency attribute, which I don't think we need to get into that level of detail. Uh, so this is uh, pretty much how they write to uh, uh, to the to the volume. So they pretty much remember which volumes are open, and then they which uh, object storage device is open, and then they start writing to that uh, volume. Uh, and uh, that's actually maintained in the replication table. So you we've written a lot of buckets, and the uh, and the buckets get written to volumes, and this is uh, pretty much the storage cell. So now we go back up one step above the storage cell which is the block index. So blocks, as I've explained, multiple blocks make a file. So this block index is basically remembers which cell uh, my file is in. And if you go back, which, which cell my file is in and uh, which bucket. So inside the cell, there is a bucket. So you remember the cell in the bucket and this metadata holds all the blocks. So there is a so the metadata holds all the uh, block mappings and the block mappings go back to cells, buckets, and volumes. So this is pretty much how they've done their architecture. This is a very very high level. I can go into details about each part of it with puts and gets, which I'm going to do in my next video. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye bye.